So we 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 started chapter three last week, and pretty much this is where we stopped with it, and we we spoke about um. We we talking about uh we 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 finished actually we finished about here last week, uh talking about uh. Well, all right, we're gonna just key it, key it in with this quote by Anne. Lamort, which talks about the fact that you are you are not your bank account or your ambition your ambitiousness. You are not the cold day lump with a big belly you leave behind when you die. Why right? you are not your collection of walking personality disorders. You are spirit and you are love. You know. Your, we're spirit and we're love. We're not just this physical body. We're not anything. We're just we're just who we have. It's this personality of that's love, and that's what we have to share with one another, right? You're not a start. You're not your status in the office. You know, I've had people uh in positions in office, and it's like they will never leave that company. They've they've carried their position as though their middle name is that company, but where are they today? They've left. For one reason or the other, whether early retirement, retire, whatever, you know, life is in flux. There's, it's changing, ever changing. You know, you want to make use of best use of every moment, every moment, because that's when you're most powerful. You're most powerful in every moment. If you abuse your position, you will lose respect in the next moment, right? These people are pretty much useless today. You know, but what the respect they get today is what they did when they when they when they were powerful, right? Now the power is gone, and the same people that's supposed to respect them, they only respect them based on what they saw in 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 the in the other moments, you know. But we life is about sowing in every moment because what you sow is what you reap, you know. And we spent time talking about that last week, you know, the 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 web the best that we do in every day or, or, or the value of every day that we live is what did we sow in that day? The, 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 the way to look at the value of our day is in what way did we, what did we sow in that day? In what way were we a blessing to someone? In what way were we a blessing even to our own self? You know, if you, if you eat everything that you have in that day, you know, your tomorrow is going to ask for what you're doing today. Your tomorrow is going to ask for what you're doing today. One of the things we'll say in um life development circle is if you if you do what is hard today, your life tomorrow will be easy. If you do what is easy today, your life tomorrow will be hard. You need to sow the seed that will give you the life you want tomorrow, because tomorrow will surely come. Right? Tomorrow will come. And it will ask of you, what did you do of your today? Right? So you do of your today in a way that your tomorrow will be proud of your today, right? We go on, you know, and we we see another quote there by Nathan Edon Tanner. He says, it is easy to do things for our own families and loved ones, but to give of our substance for the stranger who is in need is the real test of our charity and love for our fellow man, right? It's easy to be a blessing to people that I know, right? People that I'm familiar with, right? It's it's easier, you know, because we feel that sense of commonality, right? But, and there's nothing wrong in taking care of people we, we, we're familiar with, but there's also a blessing that comes from just being human to everyone we meet along our way, Right? He, he, you know, Jesus says that, right? Don't, don't, don't give to people that you know can give you back. People that you have connection with, people that you have similarity with. You know, because if you bless your children, yes, you are hoping that when they grow up, they will bless you back. You, you will get that reward, right? But and you feel that if you just bless someone, some stranger you meet along the way, there's no way you'll get the reward back. But you're missing something. Because everything that we do to another human being, we're doing to that person's creator, right? Everything. Hey, Mike, good to have you. Good afternoon. Uh, you know, what we do to another human being, we're doing to the person's creator. When I love somebody, right, 
It doesn't matter whether that person is blood relationship to relation related to me or not. When I love somebody, I am loving the creator of that person. When I hate somebody, I am hating the creator of that person. You know, so what we do for one another to be a blessing, you know, we're doing, you know, and the and scripture says that in Proverbs, the Bible says that when, when I give to the poor, I am lending to God. When I give to the poor, I'm lending to God. And poor does not have to be money-wise. It's just that person is poor in one way or the other. It might be poor in status, poor in health, poor in connection, poor in knowledge, you know, poor in connection, poor in whatever way. And I can be a blessing to that person. My being a blessing to that person is a loan I am making to the creator of that person. And that, that creator will surely pay me back, right? The creator will surely pay me back. When I do that, I'm casting my bread upon the waters. I'm not doing it because of what I'm going to get back, even though I'm going to get that thing back. I'm doing it out of love to be a blessing to that person. And the creator who is the God of the others that sees what I do will pay me back because it becomes a debtor to me. Right, and if God is my debt, or God is able to pay the debt He owes me, right? <laughs> God is the best debtor, right? So I'd rather be a blessing to somebody because that's the way I can make God a debtor to me, right? And it's probably the best place to be where God is your debtor because it will surely pay you back. I will not just pay you back; it will pay you back where you need it. That's why the the, the scripture is supposed to say this way: it says, "Give." And he doesn't even tell us what to give. He just says give. He says give. Because he made that so generic. He didn't say give money. I know people, uh, some pastors will try to you put money there because they're trying to raise offering. Because they are short-sighted. And they're trying to abuse the ancient wisdom. It's not money. It's everything that is giveable. He says give. 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 Give whatever it is that you are able to give. And the person you are giving it to needs. You know, give time, give give attention, give a listening here, you know, give presence, you know, give gifts, give money, give whatever it is that is, that is needed and you're able to give. It says give. And it says when you give, it shall be given to you to not be wasted. Whatever you give, it shall be given to you. Because when you give, there's an there's a there's an ancient wisdom that is there. There's a, there's a truth that you activate each time you give. Each time you give, there's a truth that you activate. And the funny thing about it is, even when you give that which is evil, you are activating. When you are giving hatred, you are activating the same principle. That principle works whether it is negative or positive. Whatever it is that you give, it shall be given. It shall be given. And it should not be given in the same measure you gave. It should be given in a bigger measure than you gave. It says it shall be given. Rest out. Shaking together and running over. So will men give unto your bosom. Whatsoever it is that you have been a blessing with, you will get it back in multiple fold. You know, so whatever you are giving, make sure it's something that you want back. All right? Whatever you are giving, make sure it is something that you want back. Don't give what you don't want back because it will be given to you. It's a natural principle. It's a spiritual principle. It will work. It works. Right? Whatever it is that you don't want to be given to you, don't give to someone else. Right? So, it, 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 and, and it needs to be, it's not just for those that, that can give you back. It's not just for those that you are related with. Even though you don't, you know, it balances the word of life, balances the word of life, right? We're not saying don't give, don't be a blessing to your family. We're just saying just as much as you're a blessing to your family, be a blessing to humanity, right? Don't, it's not either or, it's being a balance. Be a blessing to your family, be a blessing to your friends, be a blessing to your household of faith, but be a blessing to humanity also. Right? Because the heart that matters is not the head. The heart that matters is the heart of love. It's the bowels of mercy that you are showing that God blesses. Right? We can be a blessing to humanity. You're not limited by location. If there's a, if there's a, a way you can be a blessing to someone that is in a far land, 
If you have the ability to do it, don't hold back. Be a blessing, right? It's a bowels of mercy. That's important, right? Let's go on. You know, typically what holds us back, you know, in, in, in being able to be a blessing to strangers, you know, is fear, right? Fear limits, love releases. Fear limits, love releases, right? Typically we don't want to be a blessing to people because we're with fear. Fear can come from different angles. And um, one of the things we've, we've talked over and over as we read through the book is, is the, is the, is the uh, good Samaritan. Why right? Jesus, uh, that uh, someone came and said, who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Who am I supposed to show love to? You know, that's really the question that man was asking. Who am I to show love to? You know, saying, who is my neighbor? Who am I to show love to? And, and Jesus went ahead to give an example to say, in humanity, it is to the person that is in need that you show love to, right? It is to the person that is in need that you show love to. It is not just your family. It's not just your friends. It's not just to your, to your, to your, to your tribesman. It is to the person that is in need, right? That person that is in need might be your family. It might be your child. It might be your daughter. It might be whoever that is in need, right? That's the moral of that story. You know, you see other people that are passing by, they will have, they had different reasons for not helping. One is, oh, if I help now, what will people say? They will say that, ah, I'm helping a Samaritan. Oh, me, I'm a Jew. We don't have anything to do with them. Or, oh, they're going to demote me from my position. Oh, they will not recognize me anymore. Oh, I'm, I will lose friends. I will lose connection. You know, oh, I'm in a hurry. Whatever reason they gave for not helping that man, you know, it was not a good reason. <laughs> the only reason that is good is love, right? But but they had fears that kept them, you know, from being a friend or moving near to do something about the situation that was before them, right? So fear typically will limit us. Fear typically will hold us back from, from loving other people. And we need to, and, and, what, and whatever is done out of fear never ends well. Fear is a weapon of the enemy, not a not an instrument of God. Unfortunately, you find people on pupits who use fear as a tool. It's because of their ignorance. It's because of their immaturity. It's because of the evilness in their heart. Fear is not a tool in the hand of God. God does not use fear. God uses love. So he says, come and let us reason together. He doesn't come and say, hey, if you don't do this, this will happen. Oh, if you don't do that, uh -huh. God doesn't do that. And you won't find that anywhere. You know, it says, come and let us reason together. You know, it says today I put before you life and death. You choose. Life and death, you choose. It's not saying you must do this. Oh, you choose because you determine your future. You determine your tomorrow. You determine your harvest by what you are sowing. Right? God is not mocked. God is neutral in our life. You know, you are who you are today, not because of God. You are who you are today because of the decisions you made yesterday. It has nothing to do with God. God has set forth principles. He has set forth laws, right? You, what you do will give you the result of your life. I know some over-religious people don't understand this, but we are the captain of our soul. We are the one who created who we are today. We are the one creating who we will be tomorrow. We had the one we will have created, we will be when we are dying. Because this life is sowing and reaping. Whatever you sow, you will reap of what you sow. You are, you, you, wherever you are today, you made an appointment to be where you are today by the things you did yesterday. Where you'll be tomorrow, you are presently making an appointment to be where you'll be tomorrow by the things you are doing right now. You are responsible. You are responsible. So we have to be intentional about the way you live your life. Don't do you don't make your decisions based on fear. Make your decisions based on faith, based on love. Right? Be motivated by faith, be motivated by love, be motivated by your goals, be motivated by your, your vision. Right? So fear, fear doesn't help us. And fear is what. It keeps us, 
from breaking the barrier with, with supposed strangers who are probably our destiny helper, who are probably our friends sent from heaven. You know, think about think about Abraham. He had three strangers he met. He, for he had several reasons not to not to attend to them, not to bring them to his house, not to cook for them. But that was a visitation to Abraham. Right? He, 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 he did not act out of fear. Right? We see the same thing with Lot when the angels came in to judge Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? He could as well behave like all the, every other person. He could have well said, oh, they come to my house. These people will attack us and all of that stuff. And because of that, in, the, in, in Hebrews, you know, the scriptures will tell us that we should be hospitable. We should be hospitable. We should be hospitable. Right? We should be hospitable. Right? Show love to even people you don't know. Right? Love humanity. Be human enough to treat other people well. People that are strangers to you. Don't just be hospitable to, to people you know. Right? Be hospitable to people you don't know also. Like I emphasize also, you know, I'm not saying you should be stupid. You do that also with having the right boundary conditions in your life. Right? Because as much as you want to be nice to people, there are people that will also want to usurp your niceness want to usurp your good heart, you know, so you must have the right boundary conditions even when you do that, right? Don't ever do it out of anxiety. Don't ever do it out of out of fear. Don't ever do it out of a compulsion. Do it cheerfully from your heart, you know, out of love, right? That's what that that that's the key, you know. Do it, do it with with the peace. You know, the the guidance of peace on the inside of you, even as you step out to be a blessing, right? So 